Woohoo! I'm excited about this one. Today, we're making an Irish pot stilled whiskey. How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and a little while ago, I created a video making an Irish safety net whiskey. It was good, it's aging quite gracefully. But I got a bunch of requests asking to make a real Irish pot style whiskey. So that's what we're doing today. I can't wait to get stuck into the grist, the, the, the grain bill, the recipe for this whiskey. But first, I think it's probably a good idea to define what an Irish pot still whiskey is. First of all, it needs to be made in Ireland. And I'm not. I'm down here in New Zealand. <laughs> so I'm not making an Irish pot still whiskey, I'm making an Irish pot still style whiskey. Unlike a single malt, a pot still whiskey is going to utilize unmalted barley. Why? The simple answer is taxes. Way back in 1785, the British imposed a malt tax. So Irish distillers were paying tax on the alcohol they produced the internal volume of their stills, and their malted barley. Pretty freaking expensive stuff. So what is an Irish distiller to do? Uh, essentially, they just thumbed their nose at the tax man and started cutting the malted barley down with unmalted barley. So they didn't have to pay tax on it. <laughs> it's genius, really. And luckily for us, not only was it very cost effective for those distillers, it also gave birth to a whole new style of whiskey. One that I personally love. If you're wanting to try a commercial example, which I wholeheartedly suggest you do, because uh, Irish whiskey tends to have this weird name for just being kind of smooth, easy to drink, and kind of boring, I think that's a load of bollocks. Go out and try yourself some Green Spot or some Red Breast. Absolutely awesome whiskies. So, let's select our grains, shall we? Uh, first up, it's gonna be malted barley and I'm gonna be using Gladfield's Ale Malt. Awesome stuff, it's gonna bring the enzymes to the party to convert all of the other starches, but because we have to dodge that pesky tax law, we're only using 50%. I'm gonna be doing this grist in percentages because down in the description, down there, uh, there's going to be two different recipes for two different sizes. You can check them out down below. Now it's time for the star of the show, which is unmalted barley, and today I'm gonna to be using flaked barley. This hasn't been malted, but it has already been gelatinized, which means we don't have to cook it, which is awesome. Makes our life a whole lot easier. I'm gonna be using 45%. That leaves us with 5% to make up, and Irish pot still actually allows you to use up to 5% adjuncts. I'm gonna double down on the creaminess with this whiskey by adding in 5% of oats. Once again, uh, flaked, already gelatinized. So over at the mash tun, the strike water is already warmed up. I've got it at 65 degrees Celsius. And because the unit I'm using uh, will continually heat and hold it at a temperature, I've just got it at 65 degrees Celsius. I don't need it to be warmer for strike temp. Generally with things like this, I use roughly three times the weight of grain in water. That just works in metric, <laughs> it's easy. So if you've got 10 kilos of grain, you're gonna use 30 liters of water. Uh, if you've got five kilos of grain, you're gonna be using 15 liters of water. For those of you using uh, Imperial Freedom units, if you divide the weight of grain uh, in pounds by about 2.8-ish, that'll give you the volume in gallons you wanna use. Time to mash in, sprinkle the grain over the top in smaller portions, giving it a good stir in between. You lot know the drill because dough balls are bad. We don't want dough balls. Anyway, once you're all mashed in, give it another really good stir and let it sit for 45 minutes. If you're using a mash tun that isn't taking care of the temperature for you, you may wanna check the temperature now uh, and bring it back up to 65 degrees Celsius if it's dropped significantly. Give it another really good stir and we're gonna let it sit for another 45 minutes. Now it's time to mash out, so if you have a unit like mine where you can drain the liquid out of the bottom, do so. If you don't, you can hoist your grain bag up, uh, get all of the liquid out, and because I am not worried here about getting a high ABV in the wash, I am worried about getting a high yield overall, I'm gonna sparge. Sparging is essentially just rinsing the sugar stuck in the grains, kind of like you know liquid in the sponge, out of the bottom with fresh water. 
all of our liquid goes into the fermenter. For me, it was about 70 liters at 1.059 gravity. And we let it cool down to 30 degrees Celsius, which means it's time for the sponsors of today's show, Angel Yeast. Angel have a range of different yeasts that are great for distillers, but today I'm using their AM1 yeast because I think it's gonna add some very complimentary, tasty, fruity esters into the mix. If you wanna know more about this specific yeast or any of the uh, other range, uh, you can use the link in the description down below to check it out further. Now, I know that you're supposed to rehydrate the yeast, but honestly, I've been getting great results from just sprinkling the stuff over the top. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of the Angel AM1 in on top of the fermenter. Now this fermented out insanely quickly. It fermented down to dry in three days, uh, but I let it sit for another three days uh, just to add a little bit more flavor. So often uh, a slight souring from lacto can help add some more fruity flavors into the whiskey, which is really what I'm going for in this one. But it's time for distillation and Irish whiskey has to be triple distilled, right? Not really. It can be double distilled, but it more often than not is triple distilled. Uh, and like I said, two of my favorites are Green Spot and Red Breast. And as far as I know, both of those are triple distilled. So that's what we're going to do today. Now there are a bunch of different ways to go about triple distillation. Uh, but I'm going to loosely base my process on the way that Middleton do it and I'm going to split this batch in half and follow it from start to finish all the way through so you can see how I would handle uh, cuts and reusing faints and all of that sort of stuff. Let's get started. So first of all we're going to split our wash in two and put that on into the still. I'm using my biggest pot still to start with. This is just going to be a standard stripping run. So no cuts, not worried about offtake speed, none of that. Uh, I'm just cutting it down in volume and creating low winds which can then go into another still. And I'm going to step down in size here and use the T500. Now this time for the second distillation I am going to make cuts but they're going to be a little bit different than they would be if this was a spirit run. So first of all, yes, I'm gonna take some four shots and ditch those, uh, and then I'm gonna collect heads and save the heads. We're gonna need all of this stuff later on. I am looking for hearts, but I'm making a much wider hearts cut than I would uh, if this was a spirit run. Once again, we're gonna look for tails down the bottom, collect all of the tails and reserve those as well. The resulting hearts from this run, I'm going to call high wines. A quick note here to say, team, that there is a whole lexicon of words used in Irish distilling, triple distillation, to describe different parts of different runs. And th there is a lot of crossover between what we generally use in terms of terminology on this channel and what they use. But some of the words are the same, but have a different meaning. It's absolutely fascinating, and it's a really interesting topic. I'd be happy to make a video specifically on this in the future if you guys are interested. But today I'm going to dumb it down and kind of use layman's terms uh, in an attempt to not make this entire video about terminology. <laughs> anyway, the hearts from the T500 second distillation are going to go over into an even smaller still. Today I'm using the air still. Now it's time for the spirit run and this one I am going to run in pretty much the same way I would run any other spirit run. Once again, taking a small amount off the top and ditching it, reserving the heads, uh, making ruthless hearts cuts. We want those nice and clean for this style of whiskey. And once again, reserving the tails. There is a slight difference when we get down to tails. I'm gonna separate the tails into strong tails and weak tails. So once I've made the cut from hearts to tails, I'm gonna collect down to 35% ABV and reserve that separately and then continue running all the way down from 35% down to pretty much when the air still just doesn't want to do much anymore and reserve those as weak tails. Now it's time to start all over again back at the big still for our second stripping run. This one's going to be exactly the same. I'm not doing anything different. It's run exactly the same as the first one. The low winds once again go over into the T500 but we're gonna add some other stuff in there as well. The heads and the tails from the previous second distillation, along with the weaker faints from the spirit run on the air still. 
And now we run it the same way as we did the first time around. Once again, making a very wide hearts cut to go over into the ear still again. We're also gonna add in the heads and the strong tails from our previous spirit distillation. <laughs> and then we're gonna distill it exactly the same way as we did the first time around, making ruthless hearts cuts that can move over into our final vessel. Just be aware guys that you are gonna end up with more heads this time around. Show of hands, who's confused? I'm confused just trying to describe to you what I did. <laughs> it's, it's not actually that bad, it just takes a little while to get your head around it and sort of map it out in your brain. If you wanna go back and rewatch all of that distillation stuff again, awesome. Uh, if not, here's a little diagram that I hope might help. Now if I was gonna keep doing this, uh, I think what I would do is start discarding more and more and more of the heads in each generation on both the second distillation run and the third or the, the spirit distillation. Just so you get to a point of equilibrium where you're not ending up with more and more and more heads to collect each and every time. Anyway, let's get our hearts proofed down to 60% ABV and add some oaken so it's ready for a nice, long, relaxing maturation. There we go. Uh, we just made a pot stilled Irish whiskey, which is pretty freaking awesome. I have really high hopes for this. Honestly, it was a whole lot of work to get a couple of liters of spirit but I think it was very much worthwhile. So I wanna taste this and I wanna tell you about the oak that I've used in here. But first I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thanks Patreons for being the people that support me. Day in, day out, I thoroughly freaking appreciate it. And for those of you asking about the new Into the AM shirt that uh, you guys helped us create, um, it's coming soon. That's really all the information I have on it at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully, it'll be here before Christmas. Anyway, first up, the oak that was used in here was one of the Chase the Craft staves, but uh, it was first toasted, charred, and then added into the safety net bourbon a little while ago. Then it was pulled out and put into, uh, what was it? The Buddy uh, Distilled Beer with the Froth Tech episode. And now it's in here. So I can safely say it's kind of second use oak. It's probably been in spirits for about six months all up. Uh, but I think it's gonna do a really good job of sort of imitating a second use barrel for our purposes. I plan on aging this for a long time. I think this is gonna go for uh, bare minimum a year and then I'll kind of see how it's going. Uh, but if you're interested, I can give you updates along the way. Probably at about six months would be worthwhile doing. Anyway, uh, let's have a taste, shall we? That was ridiculously small. <laughs> Let's give you a little more. <laughs> All right. It's kind of crazy because even just at like 74% where I proofed it down from, uh, it was quite aggressive. But once it's proofed down to 60%, very, very mellow. Serially grainy, creamy, and slightly fruity on the nose already. It is a touch too serially right now in terms of something that I would actually want to drink, but I think that's going to clean up nicely with age. I hope so, anyway. All right, bottoms up. Same thing on the, on the palate. It's very, very velvety on the mouth already. Uh, it does have a slight sort of bite at the end. Once again, I think that'll clean up. There's a slight, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like eating cornflakes, but you can kind of taste the stainless steel spoon. Does that make sense? I've come across this in spirits a few times now. Uh, and I think once again, that's gonna clean up fine with, um, with some oak, with some age and some oxidization. Uh, and I'm hoping that that is what is gonna turn into an apple-y, like a, a fresh green apple, maybe kind of candied green apple flavor over time. We'll see. If it sticks around, that won't be great. Uh, but all in all team, I'm really quite happy with this. Uh, I have, high expectations for it, but I don't really know what's gonna happen until it happens. <laughs> so I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. All right, team, if you've made something similar to this, please let us know in the comment section down below, especially if you've used uh, different techniques that you think are worth discussing, drop it in the comment section down there. Do all the YouTube things like comment, subscribe, share the video, you know the drill. And I'll catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.